So I think we have a quorum. So you want, I'll stop the meeting. Yes, we have. We do have some extra people here, and they're staff. They're the youth room staff. Okay. So um, we'll call the meeting to order at. Uh, I believe it's uh, seven o four. Um, and yeah, I'm just taking, sorry about this. Just, well, I do want to make sure we have a quorum. One, two, three, four. One, two. Yeah, we got it. We got it. All right. Just double checking. Um, I think we're having a full so, Absolutely. I'm sorry. Say again. I think Chris said we're all here. All the. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, so uh, we got to do acceptance of the secretary's report. Um, does everybody want to make a motion? Make a motion to accept the report. Second. Okay, I gotta go around the room. Um, so we got Amy. Yes. We got a vote. Uh, Susan. Yes. Actually, I'm doing this out of order, aren't I? We don't have to accept this till after at the end. No, we accept it now if there's discussion, though. Is there any discussion? Okay. Any All right, discussion? Susan. I just, I just said there was just one typo that I found. I don't know if you need to oh. know that. Where is it? Page three, the fifth paragraph. It says, I don't know, maybe I'm reading it incorrectly. Right. Route, not root numbers. Wrote, not. Uh, just gonna, just Where gonna, is it? Um, Page three, the fifth yeah. paragraph. Wrote numbers should be root numbers. Read the whole sentence because I'm not seeing yeah, it. Sure. Discussed increased phone costs driven by requirement to support transfers. See the uh, fourth paragraph down, uh, Kathy. Oh, second page. Oh, second. oh sorry. One, two, three, four. Three. Third page on the PDF, yeah. Got it. Okay. I've already <laughs> lost control of this meeting because we're supposed to finish the vote. So no, we, um, we're, we're discussing the thing that you're going to vote on. Oh, okay. All right. You're right. Never mind. <laughs> I think you need a motion, though. I think you need a motion to approve. We have the motion. We haven't. We have oh, a motion we? to accept yeah, the meeting. Chris, Chris now made motion. We're discussing now. Is any any other further discussion on the minutes? Okay, so hearing none, we'll take a vote to accept the minutes. All right, now, uh, Amy. Yes. Susan. Yes. Chris. Yes. Adam. Yes. Enough. Yes. Uh, uh, Scott. Yes. Uh, Scott in the meeting. Yeah, all right. Yes, he. he uh, yes. yes. Laura. Yes. Susan. Yes, but I already voted. Oh, did you? Sorry. It's okay. Because I can't see everybody because there's many people here. I think Paul's the last one to vote. I vote yes. Okay, thanks. All right, all in. So the meeting uh, minutes are accepted. All right. Next is uh, acceptance of the staff reports. Any discussion? Catherine, is there is there any follow up on the um, on the copyright infringement? 
situation? No, um, we're okay about that right now, but I think at the next meeting, we will update that um, Wi-Fi policy because it doesn't use the term copyright specifically, and I think it probably should, um, just to really cover us. We'll never be able to find out who's doing that, but um, we haven't had any increase in it, so. Is everything else set with the termites, Catherine? So far, so good. They'll check it again in- They're doing August. well, the termites? <laughs> they're happy, little guy. Yeah, they're all dead. Oh, see, see, I was hoping they were dying. Yeah, they're, I think we think they're all dead, but we'll check oh, again. We'll check again in August to make sure. So, anything else? Yes, is, there, is anyone out in the park? Our parklet? Um, the staff use it a lot. Jeff, okay. Jeff was out there reading this morning, and the staff has lunch out there. Beautiful. Uh, but I've seen people off hours like when we're not working in the building. I've gone by and seen people there. So kind of fun. Sure, it look great. Yeah, they're fun. They're fun. We are, we, are, we are set to open May 29th, and we'll be opening unrestricted. Um, I've had many comments there. It's, it's problematic. It is very problematic. There are a lot of people who are not going to be able to come in. It severely affects children. Um, there really isn't much that we can do about it, but um, we're, we're going to play around with it, and then I'll have a full report on um, in June. And if we need to make any decisions before then, I'll call an earlier meeting. But I'm following the Board of Health. If anybody gets questions, um, send them to me. And I will also send you my answers that I'm giving to people. Uh, we're trying to be as consistent as possible. Um, but it's not, it, you know, it's easy to be consistent, but it, everybody has a different, it, it, it somebody's going to lose. It's a, it's a conflict. It's, um, there's conflicting needs. It's an unprecedented situation and not everybody can get what they want because it just is, it can't happen. It, so, it's not, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And this is not just us. This is everything in the world. Like, well, you you take a walk around town to see how people are going to react come Saturday. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah. 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 It's going to be rather difficult to, for us to just jump right in with full feet and kind of be open. I have a request for Tim to mute himself. <laughs> There's a new buzzing. There's like a, I don't know if somebody's mowing the yard. Yeah, there's a, there's a ton of bad audio. Yeah. Thank you. Catherine, we're in this like in between time now where you, you're like have the reduced opening, right? The tier four, the limited. Right, right now it's by appointment, yes. And how is that working? Um, from what I can see very well, um, no, no complaints. Um, they're not filling up. So we haven't had, I mean, maybe once we've added an extra time um because for the most part they're not filling up we we have a lot of spaces available so everybody <laughs> needs to get in is get is getting in um but a lot of people come they want to come in when there's not an appointment and we can't do that while we're doing side door at the same time so that's caused some people to be unhappy because they just want to come in what you know there was one woman who came at one o'clock and she could make an appointment for two but she didn't want to wait until two she wanted to come in at one and, you know, everybody was at lunch and we couldn't really do it. And 
she wasn't happy, but that, you know, we had all these options. So, and we were able to say in a week, you can come in whenever you want. Um, but for everyone to be able to come in whenever they want, there are people who can't use the building at all because they're susceptible. And we can't protect susceptible people. No, and then that's a problem. Catherine, the, did you put up the plexiglass or not? Um, they put up plexiglass, um, which delayed our opening for um, by appointment. Right. It's, a, it, it's at the desks. The only place they put it was at the desks. And at the circulation desk, the very first person who came in put her head around the glass because that's what you do. I mean, you, you're, you want somebody to check out your book. You're not they just found a way to get around the glass. Most people do that. Um, and the staff was prepared for that. They don't really care. It's, it's, you know, we knew it was not gonna be some, and there's not that many people in at any given time. So it's okay, but it doesn't mm -hmm. really did. Now it's there and we own it and we, <laughs> we used it for a week. And, and now we got to figure out what to do with it. Right, because you know, I'm seeing some of it in a lot of places would be requested to come down. And people are, you know, pondering whether they should do that or leave it in place and how long you do that. I think we want to leave it for a little while because we don't know what's going to happen next. Right. You know, if there's some kind of surge, if something right. else happens, if there's something with children, we really might need it. And it's affixed with an adhesive. So you don't want to be taking it down and putting it back and like, you know, I think we'll just leave it for a little while. I would agree with that. Yeah. It's also a good mental reminder, not that most people need a reminder, but it's just kind of, just a kind of visual reminder is what I should say to people that was except it, it's re, it's reminding you of things that are no longer restrictions anymore right there are no restrictions anymore so the idea is that I, I, just one thing Catherine I, I I get the no restrictions thing I'm just thinking like even though we have susceptible like you're saying like there, there's people that are not going to be able to use the, the library um, is there any way we you guys we could still like leave up stuff because just because there's no restrictions doesn't mean people can't still wear masks and like try and social distance. It's just like oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Yeah, we will. So we I, will leave it up. Yes, we will leave it up. Absolutely. Yeah, for a little while. It, it's not in the way. People, yeah. Like I said, people are putting their heads around it. Uh, they don't. Want, they don't see how. How functional is it now that you had a chance to use it with appointments? I personally feel like. Uh, something that you were wearing on your face, a, a face shield would be more effective. I mean, we just move around too much. Yeah. Um, if you're behind it, I mean, it does, It. I can see how it would offer protection if you really want, if you were at circulation um, or even at, at one of the other desks and you're talk, talking to someone, you, if you're standing behind it, they have to stand behind the other part of it. So it kind of, it does give you a barrier if you needed one. So there's so, so, so there's nothing at uh, reference. Yes, there is. There is. And but reference is like this two tiered thing. Right. So that's what I was wondering. People tend to stand at the higher tier, but it's the lower tier that's covered. Mm. So that's what so I was gonna say. People who are sitting behind. down and yeah, yeah, that's not. No. really functional then for them no it's not really it's not really useful um we talked about it it was it was um tom walsh came in and we talked about it and he's he said you know in a small way it does protect your people and you want everything that that will offer protection so you want to have it but i, I knew that it was you know it was going to be of minimal benefit but minimal is better than nothing I think, uh, you know, you said earlier that the staff was, was kind of, I don't know, but, but I think that generally it would be, you know, whatever is comfortable for them. Like we wouldn't, I wouldn't want to take it down if, even if there was no restrictions until the staff were saying, exactly. yeah, take it down, you know, right. As, you know, we, we, 
have there been any staff that that aren't comfortable with the library reopening um we've mostly talked through it um i've had a lot of people uh, more more i think people who and the youth room staff here probably know this i think the people who have the most anxiety are not telling me directly and the people who have less anxiety and are very anxious to open were talking to me all the time <laughs> You know, we can, well, all right, let's do this now. Because everything's so labor intensive that if we can just go back, you know, some people just really want to go back. Um, but like the rest of the world, it's all over the place. There's, you know, for every patron who wants one thing, there's somebody who wants something else. And I think the staff is probably a reflection of that too. Mm -hmm. um, it was helpful how you shared those. Um patron emails and the packet just to get a sense of the range of because they're all different needs yeah yeah they're all really different everybody approaches it differently well i do want to say just you know was just as much of staff here that you guys have done a great job i mean i think this what is this the fourth or fifth time you've completely reinvented how the library works in the last year so you know you guys have done a great job of being flexible and and working with it and I know you guys will figure out how to make this work and make everybody comfortable. So great job this whole year. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything else on staff reports? No discussion. Okay. All in favor of accepting the staff, staff reports? We, uh, we need a motion. I think we need a motion first. We, we have a motion. Yeah. Make oh, a motion to accept we, the staff reports. Okay. Okay. A second. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Amy? Yes. Yes. Um, Who are we talking about? Adam? Adam. All yeah. right. How about Chris? Yes. Uh, there's just, you froze up there, Adam. Um, uh, Scott? Yes. Uh, Jeff? Yes. yes. Jeff said yes. Yes. Okay. Laura? Yes. Okay. And, uh, Paul. Yes. Um, I will make a note here that it's since we have two new trustees and I don't know about you guys, but I can't buddy in the meeting. So it's kind of hard to make inches. So I guess we're going to have to do it at some other point. Um, but um, Can you repeat that, Tim? It's certainly not like I said, because we have two new trustees and I know it's difficult. I can't see everybody in the meeting uh, on my screen. So it's hard to do introductions. So I guess we'll have to do it at a later date. Um, but just want everybody, it's not like we're sitting around a table. So um, we have, uh, do we have any public participation other than um, uh, when we have the uh, summer reading program? So. Nobody, nobody else. Nope. Okay. Okay. Uh, something um, that is not listed on the agenda, uh, but we should be taking care of this is election of offices. That is uh, on the agenda. It's under new business. It's under new business. It is under new business. Yeah. Oh. Annual board. Oh, is that what you're calling it? Never mind. Uh, I didn't know that was an, I didn't annual board administration. I thought that was paying the bills and the signature cards and everything else. Never mind. It's, it's that too. Okay, but I thought that was all of it. Uh, we'll get to it. Um, 
we got uh, there was some correspondence. Um, We're gonna do the summer reading in the first. summer reading program. before we'll correspondence. Yeah, it's pub. I'm considering public participation. The summer reading program. Please. Okay. Please. <laughs> so well, let's go they, for it. Then they can leave, and you'll be able to see your screen. Okay. So <laughs> why don't Catherine give us a <laughs> give us a little update about who? I mean, give us a little. Um, uh, I, I synopsis will. to how we're going to present this. Okay, so there's youth room staff here, and they'll introduce themselves because I don't know are they all oh, their names are showing up here. So Casey is the head of the department now. She took Nancy's place when Nancy retired. Um, Annie is a children's librarian, um, and Amanda and Holly um, is does the ukulele. And is that everybody who's here? It is, right? Okay. Um, Heidi's the other person and she's not here tonight. And so they're gonna talk about what they're doing this summer. Okay. Um, I'm also hoping that I don't disappear because we're getting hit by those thunderstorms as I speak. So if I disappear, I apologize. The rest if of them- disappear, my roof's everybody. open. Um, so yeah, I- don't know, but I am the head of youth service now. Um, and yeah, Heidi is manning the desk because there's people in the library right now. So that's why that's why we are missing one. Um, and so yeah, we're just gonna really quick kind of give you guys an overview of what we're doing for summer reading. And then if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. Um, so what we're doing for the actual like reading portion of summer reading this year is very different from what we've done previous years because when we had to plan it we had no idea what stage we'd be at um so what we're doing this year is we're doing an all ages program um including adult references and on this um where the idea is every time a community member reads anything they can come into the library and we're going to have rocks at the library that and when you come in and tell us you want to do summer reading uh, you will get a gift bag of various things. Including the gift bag, the tote itself is going to have the beehive and say BB Library. There are sunglasses that say BB Library. Um, we're going to make pins. We have bookmarks, flyers. We have uh, markers, paint markers to decorate the rocks. Um, so they'll get one of those and a rock. And every time you read something, you come and collect a rock from us, decorate it. Um, we're going to have some challenges, but you can also just do it about the book you've read or whatever it is you read, the audiobook you listen to, the web comic, doesn't matter what they read that way. That way. Um, and then they can either return it to us and we'll put it out in our garden, um, or they can decorate their own yards with them as kind of free advertising, basically. Um, and... And then, you know, every time they read something, they can come in and get another rock. And that's how we'll kind of keep track of how much people in Wakefield read this summer. Um, so that's, you know, the basic of what we're doing for the, the reading portion of the program. Um, every person who comes in, every family member who comes in and, you know, gets a gift bag, um, because we have to keep track of certain numbers for you guys and for the state and the federal government, um, we'll get a raffle ticket that basically will go into one of four age brackets to win raffles at the end of the summer. Um, so that's how we'll keep track of how many people are officially participating and the ages and all that stuff that we need to keep track of. Um, and then I, before I was the head of youth services, I was the young adult librarian. So I'm still doing young adult programming. Um, and for that, it is mostly our incoming fifth graders and up. Um, so we're not doing a lot of program this, this summer, but we're gonna be doing some outdoor programs this summer. Um, I am doing, my Dungeons and Dragons program is very, very popular. And so I'm continuing that this summer, as well as a bunch of one-off programs. We're gonna tie-dye one day. We're gonna learn how to weave another day. Um, so I'm going to do just a few um, one-off programs as well. And those will, all of my programs will be just like in the plaza area of the library and like the yard. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's basically 
my programs and the main reading program. Holly's going to talk about, um, for those of you who have kids, you're probably familiar with Buzzy the Bee. If not, you might not be. So she's going to explain how we're running Buzzy this year, which is kind of a town-wide scavenger hunt, um, and talk about some of her programs. And then she'll pass it on to um, Annie. Holly, you're muted. Here we go. Um, Heidi is officially running the Buzzy program. And this summer, something terrible has happened because Buzzy is actually missing. So the kids are going to have to try to find where Buzzy has gone. Heidi has approached uh, businesses in town. She needed um, eight of them, had a really good response. And what will happen is each, each of the eight weeks, um, kids will go around town to the businesses and look in the window to find um, a poster. And on that poster, there will be a letter and they keep track of that letter. And when they get all the letters, it's, it is, it's, they unscramble it and it is the name of one of the businesses that they were at. And that's where Buzzy has been, has been hiding. And um, she's made, um, I don't know, Annie, she, she has made one of the most awful, awesome promos for this. She is our beekeeper. And there she is down there with her striped shirt and her binoculars. And this promo is hilarious, uh, getting people to come in and check out Buzzy. So um, that's how it's going to run this year. The kids are gonna just, people love walking around town, but it's also, um, she had really good support. She actually had businesses wanting her <laughs> because um, people come and they look in their window. So um, my programs, I chose three of them, one for each age group. For the preschoolers, I'm doing a craft program every week. And um, I'm theming it my own little room, kind of after the Rogers and Hammerstein story, my own little corner in my own little room for preschoolers to make a craft to decorate their room. I know we're starting off, the first one, we're going to be decorating uh, light switch plates and, um, and plug plates for their room. So those are pretty gorgeous when we're done. And so each week it'll be a different craft. Uh, for the uh, elementary age, um, I, am, um, <laughs> I am doing ukulele. I've been doing ukulele virtually since October and I'm very, very excited to get a group of kids together to play together and start not just, a, not just playing music, but a community of kids that are all learning about music through learning to play an instrument. And it's, it's a great one. It's cheap, it's the right size, and it's a good way to start um, learning and understanding music. And then also I'm kind of just below um, what Casey is doing. I've always wanted to do a book club for those kids going into middle school. And we actually have expanded the ages from nine to 11 but um, it doesn't have a name yet, but it will be a graphic novel uh, book club. And it's my secret purpose in it is that we're gonna have a great time. We'll do activities and snacks like we've done with other book clubs, but it also, all of them deal with changing friendships. And going into middle school is a time that things can change pretty drastically when you're going from your own little school into a school with all the kids. So we'll have, have a good time doing that. <laughs> so those are the ones I'm, focusing on. I've got a couple others, but all right. Uh, Annie. Thanks, Holly. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Annie Hochheiser, one of the children's librarians at the library. Um, one of the programs that I'm leading this summer that I'm really excited about is a creative writing club. Um, I actually have a master's in writing for children's and young adult literature, and my BA is in creative writing as well. Um, this is going to be a monthly event for both new and experienced writers from ages 9 to 12. Uh, we'll be doing different writing prompts, different activities, collaborative work as well. Um, and it will just involve a lot of imagination and we'll also be able to share our work as well. I really wanted to curate a great environment for kids to uh, share the work that they've done. I've met a lot of adults who are quite shy about sharing their creative work. And I think this is a great age to really kick off a uh, pride in things that you create and also uh, uh, forming a sort of a community and an environment as well in which kids can share this work and receive and give really constructive and very thoughtful feedback with one another. 
uh, helping to promote literacy, uh, Amanda and I will also be hosting a bi-weekly read aloud program. Uh, this will be for ages five to nine. Siblings and families are also invited to join us as well. Uh, for this program, we are inviting folks to join us outside um, and listen to us read a chapter book. Uh, this will be every two weeks and we'll do a different chapter book for the kids. Uh, we will also be accompanied by a pop-up library as well. So families will also have the opportunity to browse outside, which hopefully will be a really positive option for families that are a little uncomfortable coming into the library at this point in time. Uh, another outdoor program I'm very excited about leading is uh, Get Up and Move. Uh, this is a monthly program that is encouraging ages four to seven, and their siblings are welcome as well, to do exactly that, to get up and move. Uh, this is gonna be a cool opportunity. We'll do some different sort of yoga stretches, sun salutes. We will shake our sillies out and uh, just have fun moving our bodies and uh, sort of presenting exercise in a really fun and accessible way and creating sort of positive relationships with that. Uh, we'll be doing different sort of songs, little dances and rhymes. And last but not least, the final program I'd love to tell you about today. Uh, this one's for uh, small sleuths and curious kids ages four and up. Uh, they will hopefully enjoy joining us uh, for our bi-weekly scavenger hunts. Uh, these will be hosted and they're all gonna sort of incorporate an educational element as well. Um, so kids might learn, get to learn a bit about history or zoology. Um, this won't be sort of your ordinary scavenger hunt, uh, not your grandmother's scavenger hunt, if you will. Um, this one, instead of saying find a lion for an animal themed scavenger hunt, for example, uh, the clue will be find a carnivore. So you'd be able to find a picture of a lion and learn a couple different facts all about lions, um, such as frozen on my screen. I am not sure if I am frozen for you. You thought out. Uh, yeah, you're, you're good. back. You're good now. We're back now. Great. <laughs> um, keeping you in suspense there. <laughs> um, so again, this is a scavenger hunt that will include different educational elements. Um, so as I was saying, for example, if uh, the clue would not be find a lion, it would be find a carnivore. So kids will get to learn a couple different facts about animals, um, also about like US history and different aspects like that. So we'll sort of have a nice little educational tie-in as well. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Brown, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit one of the programs I'm running this summer will be for elementary uh, kids ages six through 10. Um, it's an art program. It'll be run every other week and um, it's gonna be kind of focused on various types of painting um, and that'll be outside. And all, all our programs I think we're planning except for one, um, which is um, we are gonna be doing our um, story times in person over the summer. Uh, and so that includes lap sit, baby lap sit story times. That will be inside in the lecture hall, limited to five, I think, families. Um, it's just for the babies. Then um, toddler story time and preschool story time will be running uh, outside on the common. And um, so those are each going to be uh, every other week alternating with each other. And I think that kind of wraps up our summer programming. I think we're very blessed as a building to, and a trustee association to have this much energy in all of you in the building. I'm really, really excited for the upcoming year and thank you very much. Yeah, that all sounds like really fun. Yeah. I'm so excited to see you guys right now. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> to you all. This presentation is always one of my, uh, my my favorites of the year. I always look forward to this. So uh, great work as, as always. Yeah. I know Sadie's in the other room and I kept thinking, oh, I should let her come listen at the door because she would be excited to hear everything um, that's coming up and get the inside scoop. I did have a question. I know every other year you guys have done like the, um, you know, the calendar printout that goes home with the kids through the schools. Are they so going to get that this year? 
did have not for the last couple of years, even the year before COVID, want actually wanted they like want digital copies of anything. Um, at least at this point, we're not doing one big calendar for the summer because we're trying to kind of keep it because we're so limited in numbers and requiring registration for everything. Um, we're just going to launch it like we would normally launch programs during the year where like about middle of the month, the next month's programs will go up on the calendar. People can register starting a week ahead of time. Um, so we are, we are working on, um, Annie has it to edit. Um, we are giving each of the schools based on grade um, videos for them to show all the kids that does a little bit of book talking, a little bit of yay programming and a little bit of like, here's how the, the rock, the reading part works. Um, so we're really hoping the, the, we've gotten promises that the schools will show them. So we're really hoping we, we will get a, you know, presence in the school that way. Um, it was too hard to court. We, we were attempting to coordinate um, actual Zoom, like in-person Zooms where we could do a Q&A kind of thing. Um, and it was just too difficult with, you know, being online for the schools, for us and for the schools to all figure it out at the same time. And the high school and the middle school specifically asked for just the videos because their schedules are even more wild than usual. Yeah. And they all have email. I mean, even you know, Emily's in second, they all have their own email addresses. They get their weekly, you know, Google Classroom stuff. So even like a digital link or yeah. flag, anything they could. We'll they send could. along um, as soon as we have as soon as we finalize the flyer, which should be soon for like how the summer reading program part works, we'll be sending that along and hopefully they can forward it to all the kids. Thanks. Do you have a feel for um, how many young adults and children you can service through all your programs over the summer? Um, I mean, if we got, so, um, I mean, it, it ends up depending a lot on a, a lot of things, but I mean, I think honestly, it ends up not being preschool, like the under f the five and unders end up being, I think less this year because we usually run a much more vigorous story time schedule, but doing it outside and stuff, then you just end up running into all the rain days. But I think honestly, you know, even though we're, you know, taking it easy, I think we're probably doing, I mean, we're still doing a lot more programs than I think we initially looked at doing. So, Good. I mean, I would say if, if we got a different kid for every program, I would say it would be about 150. Perfect. Not count, just for the elementary YA programs, not counting the the preschool, because those are also difficult because you get the whole family. You get, you know, the seven-year-old and the five-year-old and the two-year-old and the baby all at the same program. Um, so, and for the bigger outdoor programs, we have definitely decided on 20 families. Um, but we also aren't going to, like, if a family wants to perch a little further away, if they can still hear it, we're not going to, like, tell them they have to move along. You know, they're, if somebody just happens to wander upon it and want to listen, we're just, we're doing registration mostly for the smaller programs. And also just so we have an, like, we have no idea what in the world we're going to get for family, you know, like for, for registration and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it could be that we open it at 9 a.m. on a, you know, Thursday morning for the first story time and it's filled by 9.05. It could not fill until the day of, it might not fill at all. So we just, we really have no idea this year what how enthusiastic people are gonna be to do programs. I think they'll be very, and I think you'll be selling out quickly. Mm -hmm. That's that's my guess. That's that's my, my gut instinct is, is that, yeah. With the gift bags, is it um, like every time a you know eight year old reads a book and they can read ten a week, you guys they're getting a bag with the sunglasses and all that. They're stuff. not going to get the gift bag, so that's going to be just the first time. Like, a, and we're going to do kind of family bags, so like the family gets a bag with enough stuff for everybody in it. Um, but they will get every time they read a book, they can pick up a rock. So if they read fifty, you know, they can come in and decorate a new rock and give it back to us, and we'll display it. Um, so instead of doing kind of the prizes every time, we're hoping that the fun of decorating the rock and then getting, you know, being able to like say to your friends, Hey, you know, my 25 rocks are at the library, you know, come see them. And, you know, and we're planning on doing a lot with what we get back in on social media. So hopefully that'll help, you know, make them feel like it's really cool to return the rock. A lot of this is a work in progress because everything keeps changing. 
So when the, the rock idea started, we had to consider that no one could get in the library. Um, yeah. And now when we're talking about doing story times outside, there actually is no limit. So you don't have to, I mean, there are no limits outside. Yeah. So anybody who wants to come and hear a story, you know, you follow your CDC guidelines, you do what you want to do, and, and parents will make that decision or not. Sometimes it also relies on whether or not people are traveling. You know, people haven't been able to travel in a long time. The, <laughs> Wakefield might be empty, <laughs> you know, which would be good for Amy. It would be awesome. <laughs> it's been a very, very busy couple months. I will tell you a lot of people are going away this summer, yeah. which is great for me, so. <laughs> So that's it. If you have any more questions, you can always email them to any of us. Thank you very much for all being Thank here. You. That was Thank great. You. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very much. Again, very impressive. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks to all those folks. Okay. Have a good night. So, uh, uh, Catherine, yes. I have one question. Do we do we have to do any special? We don't have to do a special fund. Or any uh, appropriation for the summer reading? Do we this year? No. No. Okay. The, the friends just, do that. The friends fund it. Right. I just I kind of remember other years we've had to we've had to vote something. I forget what it was, but um, there's no requirement for a vote here then at all. Nope. Right. Not this okay. year. Okay. No. Okay. Um. So uh, next on the agenda is, um, um, I believe, committee reports. We have no public participation, right? We missed that. No. Nope. Oh, correspondence. Uh, there was a couple of things in the packet on correspondence. A couple of, uh, there was a, um, a Facebook correspondence from. Um, um, oh, from Marine. We get. Yes, and then there was a couple other things from patrons, I believe. Yes. So any comments on correspondence? Okay. All right, on to committee reports. Um, we have budget. Is there anything to report from budget? I don't believe so, but... Um, Except Catherine, you want us to any update on the the town meeting appropriation and budget, other than no, what you sent town, us? Town, no, the town meeting. When was town meeting? Yeah, that that budget. Was, meeting. That was approved. Um, I'm going into the year end budget. So today I sent the most recent numbers. Um, that I'll give you closer to final numbers in June. It's all very in flux. This is a very strange budget year. We didn't spend in a lot of places and had to spend a lot in other places. Um, there's money left over that we're able to spend on other needs that we're normally not able to fund. And um, we've had some HVAC issues recently. So, the, that was a few thousand dollars and I was happy to have some extra money. So I'll give a fuller report on that in June. Okay. Um, Just a question yeah, about the, the budget. Yeah. For, for the line items on there, like if you, like you were saying, if you don't spend it, like say for electricity, can you transfer your budget to like somewhere else? Only, with, only within contractual services. So it's divided into sections, contract, payroll, contractual services. So payroll, services, and supplies. Okay. And All those right, can thanks. those can be within their categories. The, All thing, right, with, the thing with supplies is um, the, the largest supply item is books. And that has a state requirement that we have to meet. So you, I, I always want to spend you can never buy enough books it, because that buys everything. That's um, digital um, databases. That's everything. So that's kind of its own line item. 
And having said that, it's a little different this year. There is no requirement. That requirement has been um, lifted for this year because it's so hard to purchase materials and the years go crazy. Um, Catherine, Catherine I think you do you anticipate do you anticipate having to go to town council to move any money? No. Between between categories, you don't? Okay. No. All right. That's good. Because I I, okay. I imagine they wouldn't let me. <laughs> I you know Yeah, they may not let you, but I'm just I saying would, yeah, you don't I would have any to do that. You don't right. see any need. No. Nope. Okay. Um uh, buildings and grounds. There's nothing new to report this month uh, for this meeting. Um, friends, who went to the friends last? Uh, I went to the friends meeting. And uh, uh, one, they recognized Cindy um, for her, all her service time, which is extraordinary, the amount of service time she put in. But the vast majority of the meeting was focused on uh, the books, and the book sale. And the prep and the building and how the what the strategies were going to be to we'll set that up plan that out and uh, deliver the sale that's coming up and Cindy's been pretty active still about sending stuff out regularly on that so I haven't heard any updates last couple of days Catherine of how that's been going sounds like all I got I got a couple couple updates for you, Chris. Uh, they got some stuff in there and uh, the big thing is they're getting books and they're trying, I guess the book drop off on Saturday was way more books than expected. So they're trying to police up and, and get some volunteers during the upcoming weeks because I believe the book sale is in the next couple of weeks. I wanna say yeah. the 19th of June or something like that, so. And is this Saturday is another drop off, correct? Right, the 29th yeah. was another drop off. It is, yeah, yeah, nine to one, I think. Yeah. And and the book sale is the 12th, the, the 9th through the 12th. And Cindy was talking about the number. She posted six different sites and six different social media <clears throat> promotional sites to, to keep this moving along. Um, also talked a little bit about their social media and their Instagram and I think they're doing a nice job with them. I don't know if you think I missed anything Catherine but that, I think that covered where they were. Yeah I think Jackie went to that meeting um, but that's oh I don't remember now <laughs> awful. but I know I've been it's it's all book sale all the time right yeah. now. That's what it yeah. felt like. Until that, yeah, it's unbelievable the amount of work they do. It always blows my mind. That is really labor intensive. They had the drop off, there were more than 100 cars showed up. So, um, wow. Yeah, it's, it's exciting because it's, um, you know, it was it 20, like life coming back a little bit. Yeah, it was 20 years in the same place and they thought they were never going to be able to do it again. So. So, and you know, we, uh, um, we ended the meeting with a toast to Cindy, yeah, which was, which was amusing, and her surprise bottle of champagne that I'm still not sure if she opened or not, but <laughs> we'll see. That's what I got. Um, is there a June friends meeting? Yes, the end of June. Uh, well, the twenty, the twenty third. Oh, so I'm not sure who's up, but because uh, Laura. Well, are you up? Yeah, well, I'm up for the June 3rd. I thought it was June 3rd, the next one. It is. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then the one, our next meeting is the 20th. I think I'm on the schedule for the 3rd. You're the backup, Paul. Oh, the backup. All right. Check. Yeah, if Laura can't make it. There's always a backup person. We might want to verify that they actually do have it on the 3rd because sometimes they wait until after the sale. So I'll check that. You'll send that to us, Catherine. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm good for the third, but I, yeah. Right.
Okay. Um, anything on gift funds? Uh, there's no, without Cindy, I don't know. Is there anybody to report? <laughs> well, it would just be me and we're gonna have to do a new gifts funds group once we move on to the next part of the agenda. Right. Um, but there isn't really any news at this point. We'll be having um, the gift fund people from First Financial do a report either in June or September. Um, okay. so and, and kind of re-explain to everybody what the story of the gift funds, because that's a long story. Yeah. Okay, so Catherine, you're just gonna try to coordinate that? Yep. All right. Um, any legislative advocacy without Cindy? <laughs> um, everything's going very well on, under advocacy. Um, we once again, libraries got a great um, funding and um, we'll probably do well with state aid next year. We did well this year, we'll probably do well next year. And also Noble got good funding too. So, and that's oh. for us because that comes, if it doesn't come from Noble, it's gonna come from our budget. So um, yeah, on the state level, that's all good news. Okay, very good. Um, and the last one is personnel and I can, I can report on that. Um, so at our, uh, what I'd like to do is bring uh, the board up to speed, except that we had a couple of executive sessions that we really can't talk about unless you, anybody really feels the need to know something that was discussed in, uh, executive session so um since our last meeting uh the personnel committee uh, essentially has met three times um we met once um you know on our own then we met with um i mean we met with steve mayo on a zoom call then we met independently uh to discuss some things that i'll, I'll go into and then the third meeting, we had an in-person meeting with Steve Mayo. Um, so those three meetings occurred in the last, you know, few weeks. Um, so the the essence of the meetings was that we um, we were uncomfortable with the way the negotiations were set up with the library con librarians contract and which had begun. So we had some internal discussion about that and agreed that we needed to lay, lay this out and sp speak with the town administrator uh, about what our feelings were on it. So we had that face-to-face -face meeting and uh, we actually went into executive session because we were discussing some parts of the contract that are not for public consumption right now. But what I would tell you is I think the tenor of the meeting was very positive. And um, I think we're back on track. And uh, the town administrator, uh, you know, Steve has agreed to continue negotiating the contract and, um, and, um, and proceed as such. What is happening differently is that Catherine and uh, we'll be part of the negotiation team, uh, but not taking the lead. And uh, we voted in a separate vote on the personnel committee to have uh, Susan um, represent the trustees at the negotiating meetings. So, um, and I know, I believe a meeting took place Monday, Catherine? Is it Monday that it took place? Monday and yes. So there was a first negotiation on Monday. Um, once again, probably shouldn't discuss the contents of that meeting other than that it took place. Um, so we seem to be back on track. Um, hopefully this is gonna go fairly smooth. What, what the goal is, is to wrap up negotiations with the librarians prior to the 
the the summit taking place, and then and then having it on the warrant and the town meeting warrant in the fall, um, and then because the contract ends July thirtieth, uh, I mean June thirtieth, um, there would be a retroactive payment that would be approved, but we can't that can't take place and the until the fall town meeting. So. I think I covered it. Um, I'd like to open it up to anybody else on the personnel committee and and throw your two cents in. Well, Tim, I just want to say the first meeting was Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, Tuesday. And, Sorry. And, and the second meeting is scheduled for um, Friday the fourth, June fourth. Okay. Those are the two. Great. Times. Hey, Kathy, is it possible for us to go into executive session in a trustees meeting and stop recording? and let everybody know what we're talking about? Or do you feel comfortable or uncomfortable, Catherine or Tim talking about that? Well, I'll throw my two cents and I, I feel a little uncomfortable doing that at this point. Okay. Um, it wasn't planned. And um, I think we could, I, I think we can allow the, you know, may, maybe what we could do uh, at the June meeting is do that if we need to so everybody can come up to speed on the specifics um of the contract you might even have it settled by then right that was my next question for susan do you think you could have it wrapped up in a meeting or two um and well i mean i think we've been advised to not even deliberate among ourselves like Catherine correct and I so okay. I, I i think it's going well good I, I don't think all right good I so feel good, Catherine, I, I, I can say that. Right, so I would say once it's settled, we'll be able to release the executive session minutes, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So yeah. we might as well wait, Chris, and, and, and release the executive session minutes and then you know see if the, anything needs to be said beyond that. Right. And, and that can go, like Tim said, if it's on the agenda, then the public knows to expect an executive session. Okay. And that might be better. You no, know, I just didn't understand the protocol and kind of wanted and, to get and just for I kind of don't either. Um, just for the personnel committee, the the things that we brought up um, with Steve, pretty much I, I feel like everything's been addressed. Good. Good. You know, and and um, everything is going to be good. So I think that we did a good, you know, everything we brought up has been responded to. So you feel like we made the right call with the strategy going forward? I do. Good. Yeah. Great. I don't know about how anyone else feels, but I, I feel, yes, it was the right Yeah, so I needed to hear. Yeah, I was, I felt very positive after we left. So um, I think um, things are back on track. So, and I, and Catherine, you're obviously more comfortable in, in this scenario, right? Okay. Yes. So if, if we have nothing else on that, then uh, we can move on. Um, but does anybody have any questions uh, that we may or may not be able to answer? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, uh, now we're on to new business. So uh, the annual board administration. <laughs> so this is, um, this is where you're going to... Um do your committees and, and um, nominate, do your executive board and all of that. So if you want to do, um, if you want to nominate and vote on your boards and committees first, that might be. Well, I think all we have to do is vote on the, the executive board. The committees can be assigned. They don't need to be voted that I, I don't believe. Right. Okay. Yep. So, um, well, first of all, we'd have to we have to elect a chair, and um, for the next year. So, I'll entertain any motions for um, or sponsoring of anybody. Does anybody have? Dave, do we talk about a slate or anything? Yeah. Well. Does anybody want to nominate anybody for chair? I'll nominate um, if 
if he's accepting, I'll nominate Tim as chair um, because I think he's the longest standing trustee at this point um, and has a ton of experience and has a new grandchild. Now know how much longer we're gonna have Tim around for. So um, I think Tim would make a great chair. And if I, can I, can I double dose on this? Please. What, can I sure. throw it out? Um, as the, the second senior member, I think, um, and because he's been the best secretary ever for way too long, I nominate Jeff as a vice chair. And for the um, hat trick here, I am nominating Laura as secretary only because she is the one that finds all the spelling errors every every month. And I don't know if she'll accept that, but um, that's what I'm throwing out there for you guys to accept or not accept. I'll make a second to that slate. And what we can do is vote the whole slate if we want. That's we don't have to do it individually. Any other nominations? And Jeff and Laura, you guys can accept or decline. If, you know, <laughs> I'm going to throw you to the wolves. No, I, I I accept, but I I do want to point out that uh, uh, I believe Susan has me by a, a year or a year and a half on on uh, on, on tenure, if that if that sways anyone's vote. That wasn't the only basis, you know. I mean, I think you're also just, you've been the best secretary ever, so. You, you're correct, Jeff, but I'm glad that I never had to step into the secretary role, so <laughs> I'm good with whatever. <laughs> okay. And Laura, are you okay accepting? Uh... Can I just ask for clarification on the expectations? Is it just taking the minutes from the trustees meetings Is it and sharing those, or is there something beyond that? Nope. Just the trustees meetings. There is there is the annual report, but I can help you with that. And actually everybody on staff can help you with, with everyone on the board can help you with that. And it's once a year, we, we can work that out. Okay, that's here, thank you. All right, well, hearing no other nominations, um, I'll we'll take a vote to vote the slate of um, myself as chair. Jeff is vice chair and Laura is clerk. Uh, I, try, I mean, um, yeah, clerk. So is um, we take a uh, vote, we'll start around the room. Amy? Yes. Susan? Yes. Chris? Yes. Uh, Adam? Yes. Uh, Laura? Yes. Uh, Jeff? Yes. Uh, Paul? Yes. And Scott? Yes. Okay, so we have a vote. That's the going forward for the next year. It'll be myself, um, Jeff, and Laura, the executive. Um, in terms of the committee assignments, um, um, we can, there's set, there's people on the committee now and what we de need to do is if somebody wants to move around in a committee, we can just request to do that. If you want to stay on the committees that you're on, that's fine. And Scott and Paul, you could express some interest in, um, uh, volunteer various for, committees. Uh... Yeah, I can uh, volunteer for budget. So Paul would like to be on budget. Uh, actually, Catherine, I, I don't have in front of me the existing committees. Do, do you have that handy? I it's do. on page 60. It's, I know, it's in the packet, which um, I have in another computer, so. Okay. The budget is, is Adam and Laura. And it was oh, I got it. I, I actually got it. I just found it. So um, the budget committee is currently was was uh, Kevin Scanlon, um, Adam and Laura. So we need Paul, Paul you volunteer to take the slot of um, of Kevin Scanlon, that slot. Yes, sir. OK, can I, great. Can I mention something about the budget committee for everyone who's yeah. on it? Um, yeah, the upcoming year, and this is probably not just for the budget committee, but if we are going to need a new roof, um, there, there will be a little 
bit more action than you might normally find in the budget committee. So that would mean maybe um, showing up for one of the board meetings with the town council or um, capital planning committee. Um, and it doesn't well, have to be someone on that committee, but that is coming up, that, that possibility. It was my first year, so baptism by fire. I don't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Here we go, jump right in. And, and it might be helpful too, just kind of given, I think the, the committees are pretty self-explanatory, but to cap in your point, like, I don't know, Adam, I don't want to speak for you, but like I've been on the budget committee the past couple of years and I've never seen anything, you know, like, you know, so thank you for saying that. Yeah, it, there hasn't, there hasn't been anything. So it's been quiet actually the last couple of years. So, um, and what we've had that wasn't quite, that required us to be busy involved everyone. So, um, yeah, I could make that committee. comment too. It's a good point, Laura. The committees are standing committees. Uh, this is for the new trustees, and um, there's not a lot of heavy lifting usually. Every once in a while, something comes up. Uh, most recently, you know, we just discussed personnel, so we had to get together a couple of times. Uh, but it's pretty rare. I've been doing this a long time, and there just hasn't been a lot of heavy lifting um, on that. So. You don't need to be worried that you're making some. I'm she sorry, Susan. We had a couple of years of heavy lifting. We had Catherine. Yeah. We have this. So. Oh, that's true. So of all the years that's of true. big personnel, it was these two years. But now budget can take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But um, I'm volunteering for the budget committee. Is that what I heard in that? Is that what I? <laughs> no, we. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul volunteered. Paul volunteered to be on the budget committee. We have a um, facilities committee. Um, I, I, I just uh, assume keep doing that with my partner, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if, unless somebody else wants to be on that, um, um, that's, you know, it's what I do. So it's easy for me. Um, uh, we have gift funds. Yeah, now we have Cindy. Cindy who's gone, so we need somebody to take a slot there. I'm happy to step into that. Oh, I need to peek outside. Okay, I'll volunteer. I'm a utility player, though. You put me wherever you want, but I give funds caught my eye as I looked at the committee, so I'm happy to step into that one. All right, that's great. Great, Scott. Uh, we'll put you on that then. Um, legislative advocacy. That's uh, that's one that actually Cindy did carry the. The ball there, but Cindy, uh, it is an important function. So I don't know anybody that's really, if anybody's particularly interested in just keeping updated and kind of staying in the loop of what's happening at the state level for uh, for our benefit. Does anybody have that uh, desire to to do that? Yeah, I, I can I can pitch in with that. Um... All right, so Chris. All right, so Crystal takes Cindy's slot there. I think that was Jeff. And, um, that was Jeff. Oh, that, was, <laughs> that was Jeff. Chris, I think that's right. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, I'm sorry. Sounded like just, Chris. Just one thing, Jeff. It's okay. I'll, I'll, um, so Jeff, you're going to do that? Uh, well, I, I, I can, but I, I'd be happy to, to, to take the, the if, if other people want on that, that would be great. You know, the idea that one person is going to do what, what Cindy used to do is, uh, is, is, is probably a bit far-fetched. So if anyone else wants to jump in. Yeah, so, I think Cindy was kind of an outlier. She just really loved doing that. And, and she was very good at it and loved to, you know, be abreast of things. It might take a little more effort, but um, I think it's just a good idea that somebody's paying attention um, along, along with Catherine. Catherine pays attention to what's going on at the state level all the time, so. Um, Jeff. Oh, sorry, Ted. Hey, Jeff, oh, well, I'll, no, sh no, I'll shadow that's you fine. on that, um, on that too. I'll, I'll, uh, but right. uh, I just have some other stuff going on, so I probably can't get like too, too involved with the legislative piece until probably later on this calendar year but it was something that caught my eye so i mean eat i'll be like unofficial but i'll definitely be yeah in the we'll, uh, doing that okay yeah that, that that sounds good all right so we'll um 
So it'll be Jeff and Laura and Paul. Do you okay. need, me, need me on there? If we have you Jeff. could drop off, Laura, if you want. That'd be okay. Yes. Okay. That sounds good. Taking All right. on. So Laura's there. going to drop off, Catherine. Okay. Yep. And last but not least is personnel. And um, I'd like to stay um, on there. Yeah, I, I think we. Nice I, I would. I would suggest that we kind of stay together. Um, going forward, at least for this year, does that sound reasonable? everybody i'm good with that okay all right so we'll keep the personnel committee the same um now catherine do you have to explain about signatures and payroll and all i mean um yeah so you, do you need to go over that with us just briefly um accounts payable is uh, the bills and there now we we sign for those um, every other week. Now, it used to be that all of the trustees or a, a number of the trustees had to come in and sign these, and that's not the case anymore. Jackie or I can do it. Um, you, everyone has access. They're on the website. Everybody has the town website. Everybody has access to them. Um, you could come in any time. The only time you um, I would need five trustees is if Jackie or and I both were not able to sign it. Um, that's very rare. That would be very rare. Um, but that's the the rule. So it says that Jackie, that McDonald or Powers or five of you would have to sign that, and um, Stephanie, the secretary, would arrange that with you. The payroll is also every other week. And um, Susan had been the one who said she would come in because you need one person for that. Um, and Susan said she would come in if Jackie or I could not do it. Um, it's almost never gonna happen because the town will now allow us to wait a week even to sign it. So if we were uh, both there on that day, they'll say, oh, come in next week and sign it. Um, it's, it's all digital and it's, and there are so many people who see it that there's so many ways for them to audit it, that they're not quite as concerned about the signatures anymore, but that is the rule and it's on that sheet, um, so that you have it. So Susan, if you're happy to stay as that payroll signer. Yep. That, that. That. Okay. But Catherine, um, do you need new signatures this year just we at will. some point? We will need new signatures. Um, and there's a sheet that comes from the um, Kevin Gill's office. And it's everybody has to sign next to their name. I typed your name on it. I put one in the packet so you could see what it looks like. But everyone will have to either come into the library and sign it next to your name. Or if you don't get in in the next month, I'll bring it to June's meeting. Um, because in June we will meet in person in the library um, and you'll be able to sign then. So if you can come in, that's great. It will be in the office. Um, and if not, we'll, um, we'll bring it next month. But that goes to the town so that they know what your signature looks like. Okay. All right, so everybody got that clear? Okay. Great. Catherine, if we come in, do we <coughs> let you know in advance? So um, or you, you or Jackie? Yeah, you probably don't have to because um, anybody can let you in. We keep it um, on the black file cabinet. It will just be on top of the black file cabinet. Um, if, if you give me a heads up that you're coming, I'll make sure I'm there because it just makes it easier. You know, so if you Catherine, say before you be in some evening or whatever, we'll be there. Before you print it, uh, you just left out the D in my name. So I can't, you know, what? To, I did. I think I must have taken that from the first time I did it wrong. Okay. Yeah, that would not be good. Well, if we're being picky, Catherine, you might want to change mine to Timothy, because that's how I sign. Okay. Instead of just Tim. It's been Tim for years. All right, then leave it alone. 
no, 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 no. If that's what you're signing, You'll be who I don't care. I like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, we'll do that. Okay. I don't care. No, I'll fix that. Um, so you committee, the signer, you have to sign. The other thing I included was a list of um, the board of trustees and the staff will have copies of these and it's the information that they give to patrons if they wanna reach you. So I need to know that the, the D is in Rogers on this one. Um, if, I, if there's an error or if there's something here that you don't want the public to have, let me know and I'll remove it. And then um, also on that, I maintain a list of your contact information for just the trustees that we have just for us. So if you have any kind of number, in the event there was an emergency and we needed a quorum, um, if I was texting everyone to say, it's a pandemic, we need to close the building, it's March 13th, can I do it? Um, I need five people to say yes or no. Um, so I need to be able to get in touch with you. This is less of an issue than cell phones. Before cell phones, it was more of a thing. But sometimes people work and they don't have a cell phone near them. I used to have Kevin's um, work phone number because he didn't always have his cell phone. So if you have like an emergency number that's different, um, let me know, just email that to me and I'll, um, I'll update that for everyone. <laughs> Catherine, we used to keep a, a, a second version of this that had folks' uh, uh, contact information that was not to be right. uh, open to the public, but right. was, was for, for, for you and the staff. Do we still maintain that? Yes, and I didn't put it in the packet because I realized that the packet is public. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, Thank you. so all these years it, it was going into the packet the, a public packet is different now than it used to be. Public is now scanned and it's everywhere. It used to be that it was public and it was in town hall somewhere and nobody was really going to go and look for it unless they had a, a request. Um, so I didn't put it in the packet, but yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's a second document that has extensive contact information if you have more that you want me to um, add to, and then I'll give that to all of us for emergencies. But the one that's in the packet is the one that's going to the public. So if you want anything removed from that or added, let me know. And so what I would suggest then, Catherine, is for what uh, Jeff's talking about, uh, if anybody has any information to give to Catherine and we could, for the next June meeting, we could have that list. Um, Yes, um, I'll, I'll, I can okay. set it out before the June meeting because it's in, it's internal. Well, that's true. You could do that. That'd be fine. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So we have to look at the uh, schedule of meetings. Um, is yeah, that I chose next? Yes, I chose the fourth Wednesday. That's what you have been doing all along. It's not set in stone, but that's what had worked for everyone. Um, so this is the fourth Wednesday at seven o'clock. And where there's an asterisk, it's the third Wednesday. And that's because the following week is a holiday. So November 17th is the third Wednesday, but the following week is Thanksgiving. Um, December 15th is the week before, but the following week is the 22nd, which is a little close to Christmas if people travel the 15th might be better. And then February 16th is the week before school vacation week. I think, the, yes. I think the only thing we missed is um, the week before Memorial Day, May 25th. Oh, uh, look at that. That's the week before. Okay, so that would, but, be, that would be the Wednesday before. Yeah. The, and Memorial is the, is the month is the following Monday? Is that not far enough in advance yeah. for you? The 18th is better. 
Well, that's the same as tonight. That's, that's the same as tonight, right? It's Wednesday before. Yeah, it's the same as tonight. So yeah. I'd say leave it alone. Okay. How does the April uh, meeting compare to? Do we know when town meeting is next year, so we don't run into the same issue of uh, do giving new trustees twenty four hours? It's the day before. Or election is the day before. Good question. It's the twenty sixth. Okay, so um, you could go to twentieth or the thirteenth. The twentieth oh. is going to be spring break. Right, so the 13th is the week before. That's what we did this April or this past April, right? Mm hmm Yeah. That's right. Okay, so April 13th? That's fine. Okay. And the rest are okay? When is April vacation? The uh, 16th, 17th. And the week following, it starts with Easter weekend. Are you thinking in terms of blossoms? Yes, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the last Saturday in April is the 30th. Which that's what I would go for. Yeah. Yeah, because the first Saturday in May is the seventh, and that's a little bit further. I think that thirtieth is good. April thirtieth is a wonderful date. And the pandemic saved us from running into school vacation the last two years, so we deserve a win. I know. Okay, and that also has the friends meeting schedule on it. It's in alphabetical order. That's how it, I, I was doing this for years before somebody said to me it's in alphabetical order. Um, okay. So, yeah. That's uh, fine. Uh, okay. So is the next thing banking? Yeah. What about what? So what's that thing, all about? The thing about banking, it, I just want to tell you this to prepare you for the next meeting. Um, I believe Cindy and probably Kevin um, had signed for all of the accounts, um, the gift fund accounts and the bank account. And we had a checking account that the bank closed because it never had any use. And um, I didn't reopen that account because I knew we were going to have a new board. So at the next meeting, um, I can look at, I think it's going to be the gift funds committee. Well, it doesn't have to be gift funds committee, but it probably should be. Um, I, we, we need, maybe the committee might have to meet. Uh, we're going to have to talk more fully about the gift funds because I think a lot of people don't know a lot about them. Um, and then decide who is going to sign on as the banking people, which just, I'm not even sure what that means, just that your name is on the account um, as, a, as a person um, responsible for it, one of the people responsible for it. Um, so just think about that for next week, for next month. Um, and I'll put a lot more information together about how they work and what exactly the funds are and with it, how they came to be. Did you That's throw a full, full meeting? Hmm? Did you throw a little tidbit comment in there a minute ago that next month would be in person? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, it was right there. Yeah. yeah, that was at Tim's. Well, Tim's <laughs> well I actually I brought it up, but what I also wanted to mention, I I want to make sure everybody's comfortable with it. Um, is anybody not comfortable with meeting in person? Well, the town council well, voted that they all, it's, you know, the state says that after June 15th, um, they don't have that remote ability anymore unless you adopt well, something. Yeah. But personally, I don't think there's anything. I thought, the, I thought the governor extended it until um, September. 
No. Yeah, I believe that's what just happened. The governor extended it through the end of August. Oh, it's August. Okay. Through the end of August, so yeah. Well, I guess the, the point would be then, you know, if we meet in person, do we have a larger space? Yes. Well, we not have the trustees room. No, I wouldn't do the trustees room. Right. Well, that's that's my only that's my only point. I would do the we'll lecture have a larger well. space, and we'll be yeah based out. Uh, I knew right, that so as of sorry, um, based on the correspondence to to patrons that we're not um, reserving any meeting space at this time, right? Right. Any conflict of interest with us using meeting space? No. Okay. library business. Okay. Yeah. So next, so the June meeting, which is what the twenty third, is that that right? Yes. Oh, I won't be there. Twenty the third. Who, who won't be? I won't be there. I'll be in Nashville. I right, well, we'll miss you, Amy, but <laughs> we're, we're still going to meet without you. All right. <laughs> Try and fall off one of those cards. <laughs> So uh, we're going to meet in the lecture hall then. Is that how you'll post it? Yes. Okay. All right. That's great. Um, because as you can all tell, I have no idea what I'm doing running a Zoom meeting. So I'm much better in person. <laughs> um, Okay, so what else you got, Catherine? You got. Um... Uh, so the next thing is the holiday schedule. Oh, right. Um, no real surprises on this one. It follows, um, for people who don't know this, we track how we've done the holidays, and I think it goes back to close to 1980. Um, so when I put on this schedule that I would like the trustees to close the library on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of the Christmas holiday, that is um, because that what, that's what's been done in the past when the, when the holiday is on a Sunday. So we've tried to keep that consistent. Um, I wouldn't always keep it consistent if I thought there was a reason to change it. So if I knew that um, people's habits changed and they actually came in on Christmas Eve, um, I would make a stand for being open, um, but people don't come in on Christmas Eve. Um, so that's, a, in that particular one, it's a weekend. No one's going to be at the library. Um, and the only other thing that's different is Juneteenth is there. And that's a, sun, Juneteenth is now a contractual holiday for the entire town. Um, that's going to be on a Sunday next year. So we would close both Sunday and Monday, and that's um, contractual. Yeah, you know. I don't know if there's anything else that's different. One. Thanksgiving, we always close at five o'clock the day before Thanksgiving. Everybody works that day. People who work at night can come in during the day. Catherine, am I correct in the way that we've left the Sundays is that we are not going to be open on Sunday unless it gets brought up at November town meeting. Yes. And we would be the ones to bring it up at November town meeting. So um, if the contract is going to be funded at that meeting, I would include a separate number for Sundays. And I'll, and I'll talk to Steve before I do it so that I know it's what he can afford and, and what, you know, like maybe we should start in January kind of thing or, um, well, 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 he can probably use all that money that we've given back to them over the last few years to afford it, right? So I know. I, know. I think so, I think they'll find I think they should be able to afford it. I yeah, I think they probably I think they'll want to because people like Sundays. Um, so we'll have time to talk about that in September and I'll have more information then and then um, that will give us time before the November meeting to put all those numbers together. So you have to vote on the holiday schedule. Okay, we'll take a vote. All right. Um, so do I hear a motion? So moved. I'm sorry, who said that? Laura. I second. Okay, second from? That was Paul. Paul. Was that Paul? Okay, great. 
All right. All in favor accepting the um, uh, holiday schedule as presented. Uh, Amy? Yes. Susan? Yes. Chris? Yes. Adam? Yes. Um, did, I, did I get you, Susan? No, I don't know. I did. Okay. Uh, Laura? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Scott? Yes. And I'm yes. So we can all have holidays now. We can. Um, so what's next uh, is the uh, Tuition reimbursement, is that? Yes, it is. Is that what you're looking for? That's it. Tuition reimbursement. So, uh, Catherine, maybe for the new trustees, you might wanna what? explain a little bit, just uh, briefly, how this works. So this is a policy that was written by the trustees originally in 1986, and it was updated in 2003. And it's the, um, the policy regarding tuition reimbursement for employees. Um, and so there's sort of a whole formula to it. There is a difference between professional development and continuing education um, because we, we fund those in similar ways, but a little differently as well. Um, and then there's a criteria to decide whether or not you want to fund this. And in general, you, you're looking to make a good investment in the personnel of the library. Um, we sometimes use um, gift funds, trust funds to, to fund these things. Um, in, for this particular year, I can fund this with the operating budget because we didn't have um, some, any, some professional development um, expenses that I normally would have. So I actually can fund this through the budget and you wouldn't have to vote to, uh, you would have to vote for me to fund it through the budget, but it doesn't have to come from a gift fund. Um, so this is Annie and she works full time. She works 35 and a half hours. So she had filled in the prorated thing. It, it, it wouldn't be prorated. We would be, um, we would be reimbursing the 100%. Um, which is $948. As she mentioned earlier, um, she does have a master's degree in children's literature now. Um, and she has an interest in being a librarian, which was why we hired her. She was originally a part-time employee. And um, when we had a full-time opening, we snapped her up. Um, she has a lot of talents that fill in some of our blanks. And by going to library school, she's adding all kinds of information to the building on an ongoing basis with really fresh information. Uh, the school that she's going to, San Jose State, has a good reputation. It's, um, it's, uh, ver it's an online program. Um, and she wrote a little note about what she was gonna do with it. Uh, so I would recommend it. Um, I think there's a very good, when you look at some of the things that you would be looking at, um, I think she likes Wakefield and she would be willing to stay. She's had a good response with the public. Um, she's very fresh and um, has, you know, good um, skills with the staff, um, helping to develop the staff, do other things. I think she was one of the key people behind helping everybody get online in a re when the pandemic hit in a really um, professional way. Uh, I think she has some acting background. She likes acting, which is just perfect for kids because kids love acting. Um, so I don't know if you have any other questions there from what you were able to read. I took a look at the uh, policy, ma'am, and um... And a, and a little note, and just I saw that that piece in the budget. Um, so thanks for the explanation. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, my only question was so, around the, the prorated factor, and you've kind of clarified that, Catherine. It, we would yeah. only be paying the right forty-eight. That's, that's really for part-time people. You're going to prorate it for part-time people. Mm -hmm. um, and she does not work 37 and a half hours. She works 35 and a half. Um, so it's just the full 100%. So um, we do have to vote on this. So this is a request. This is the request for it. And then I think later on, we have to actually approve the payment, don't we? Uh, Catherine? Yeah, yes, because she has to pass the course. Right. So right now we're just approving for her to move forward as long as she's successful. <clears throat> Excuse me, as long as she's successful in the course, then we do re will reimburse her at this um, level. So um, we need a motion to approve the request for tuition reimbursement uh, from our operating funds for for um, for Annie. I'll make that motion. Actually, am I going to butcher her last name? Hawkeiser? Hawkeiser, Hawkeiser yep. No, not bad. I'll, I'll make that motion. So, okay, Paul makes the motion. You got a second? Right here. Okay. All right, we got to go around the room again. Amy? Yes. Chris? Yes. Susan? Yes. Adam? Yes. Laura? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Paul? Yes. Scott? Yes. And I'm a yes. Go forth and learn. Excellent. Yo. Okay, um, so Catherine, you want to talk about the um, the new projector? New projector. Um, the projector we had is um, much older than I realized. It's ten years old. Um, so we looked into having it replaced. What made me think of it is that Noble had their um, projector replaced with something that could do zoom so that we can all actually participate in more of Noble's trainings and everything without having to drive out there. So when we started looking into it, we realized that the quality of what's available now is so different from what it was 10 years ago that when people came in, when, when we were looking for proposals, we asked for multiple levels of proposals. You know, what would, what would the basic Thing be what would it be if it was you know if you added this and this and this so we ended up finally looking at proposals that included audio video and zoom capability um, and had three people in and um, and ended up choosing one that we thought um, really had everything that we needed um, and we really liked the way that it was engineered and it included um it included a screen and some of the things that you know some of the things that we told them is that we've had complaints this unit is used both by the staff to do programming and also by the public so if the public comes in and rents a room or you know bar, uh, signs up for room use they have access to this equipment. So it has to be easy to use, but it also needs to be functional. And people complained that their Apple wouldn't connect and the, the, the graphics weren't that great. And then we have a guy who comes in to do an opera club, gets tons of people to come. And it, it looks like it's from 1960. I mean, it's all really, you know, it just doesn't have good sound. So we, went with the whole, the audio, the video. Um, it's got a, a button panel in the wall that's relatively simple to use. It will connect to anyone's laptop and there will be two cameras mounted in the room that will allow Zoom capability. Um, it's similar to what they have in, in offices, but it's not office heavy. Um, 
it's, it is more designed for the kinds of uses that we would have. Um, did you have any questions about it? Well, uh, Catherine, I'm sorry. I had my one question. I mean, I'm assuming you're, you're recommending DGI as the vendor, right? No, Pro AV Systems. Oh, Pro AV. Yep. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. All yeah, right. it's it's not it's not the cheapest, but it it's actually the cheapest for what we're getting. I had one so question. Oh, my only ahead. question is is procurement. So mm -hmm. how are you procuring this since we're going with the middle price uh, of the thing? Did not did DGI not provide? everything that you were looking for? Um, no, no, they, they, di they didn't. The quality of the, um, what they were offering, the quality of the camera was not as good. Um, they did have audio, but the audio was not as, as good as the other two. But the ad tech one was unbelievable. I mean, it was top of the line, it was unbelievable, but it was way more than what we needed in that space. And by seeing the three of them, I kind of got to see the different um, pieces and how they sort of work together. So okay. he, he, DGI did not offer as much equipment and not the same kind of equipment. Um, and did not include a, uh, a screen, which our screen is really old. And I later found out that the screen really affects the, the video. That the photos that Jeff shows, his travel photos, in a, lot of re in a lot of ways, those don't look good in the lecture hall because the screen isn't good for it. Um. I don't have an issue with it other than the procurement that you make sure that you, um, you know, you document that while yeah. we're paying a, a higher amount. Plus, aren't right. they on the, um, aren't they a vendor that's on the uh, um, yes. they, they, um They're, I, I believe they're all on state contract. Um, right. One, one of them would not give me their state contract information. I think they are on there. They just didn't give me the information. Um, but the one that we chose is on MHEC and is also a certified woman owned business, um, which is just a little plus that they'd like you to try. If you can get any of those things, they like to, they encourage you to. Um, I, I had one question. Yeah. How old is the current system? Um, there's, well, there's different parts of it and, um, the camera itself is 10 years old. The audio is older than that. I don't even know when the audio went in and I've been there for 20 years. So no, technology is a little better now. So I, yeah, I it, a may, it may be original to the building. I was just looking through the stuff and it, it seems like for the price that system, because they're replacing everything where you're re, uh, they're keeping a lot of the older stuff um, with the, you know, in the, the yeah. cheapest option. Yeah. So it might be for the long run. I, I mean, it just seemed a little bit more of a viable option, but thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That was, that was our yeah. idea too, is that if you've got, you're putting all that money into it, you kind of want to do it all. Uh, I just have one question. I, I, I agree with, 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 with Paul and Tim that it uh, looks like for what you get, uh, that that's the way to go. Um, did you look at ownership costs, specifically a bulb replacement? I know at work, we have some projectors where a bulb is a hundred bucks and some yeah, where a bulb these, is a few thousand dollars. These don't have bulbs. They don't have <laughs> bulbs anymore. Isn't that- so It's all magic, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it's like LED and lasers. <laughs> the um, yeah, because that that's the issue with the one we have that's ten years old. The bulb is almost five hundred dollars. So I thought if the bulb is going to go, maybe this is time to look at a new piece of equipment. Especially since I think Zoom is here to stay. 
So we actually in the wintertime would be able to have meetings where you know, you could have a book group and people come in and there are some people at home and they can still participate. It might be that they that you find out you don't like it that way, but it's an option. It's going to give us options that we don't have now. So I, I had two questions, Catherine. Um, first, is this, um, would this mean that we, you know, if we had our trustees meetings in there, we would be able to do kind of a Zoom participation from the public if we had to? I, I think that ha maybe that has has to be determined by the state though, doesn't it? But I think you, I think maybe we could. Um, I mean, and then the second question, is this, is this coming from state aid or is this just regular budgeted or is this a capital expense? Well, I had planned on it for state aid um, because I had another expense that Tim had recommended we um, use, um, you use out of the regular budget and and it was a capital item they didn't want they wanted me to use state aid they didn't want me to do it so i thought that this was going to go through but as it's turned out um the bulk of it i can put in the regular budget um because i have the money for that so the i split it in two and the parts that i'm buying are coming from the budget and then the engineering that they do when they come to install it that will probably come from state aid oh, oh, yeah. ask a question or a couple questions um because it's all this newfangled technology like bulbless projectors do who um uh, who on staff like knows the stuff or is there any kind of service contract or warranty there'll be there'll be a service contract well i don't know if there'll be a service contract but there will be um people who will service it from pro av um and then the individual pieces will have warranties based on their um whoever they're bought from um and what was the rest of your question? Do we have someone on staff who is sort of the AV expert? Um, you know, brand new, very thirty thousand dollars system. I imagine some. Right. You don't want anyone just smash them. There's, there's three people who will be involved. Actually, maybe four. None of us are experts. Nobody's an expert. But that's part of the whole procurement process. Is they know we're not experts. We don't have an IT department that does this. So. Alyssa uh, is the head of tech services. She's involved. Dave's involved. Um, somebody from reference and Jackie and I, and we'll all, um, you know, know everything that there is to know. They'll teach us what we need to know. But part of this too is that the public needs to be able to use it. So this can't be too complicated. That's why the one that they had that was used by businesses is just a little too much for us. That's a little too many parts to break, too many things that, um, you know, this will have something in the wall that if the Boy Scouts are in there, it's it's not gonna be broken. I guess that was my thought is if somebody's just, you know, signing out the room for whatever use, public meeting, whatever right. they wanna do, and they wanna use the equipment, what's the, safety backup as far as you know say it's a, a student group or something young people in there who maybe aren't as careful with a really yeah, well, it, it wouldn't be because the um you have to be an adult to get a room right well so not that we wouldn't let kids do it but there has to be an adult in charge is the bulk of the system sort of locked away in the closet where the current stuff is it's not like um i think they're, yeah they're going to use the same um Thing that's in there that, that holds things um but more of it i think is installed like in the walls oh. and everything and everything is smaller you know it's not as big as it used to be so it's 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 a, so where the light switch is that's where it's going to be um and when you plug in you'll plug into the wall right like right now there's something coming from the wall and you have to drag it out that won't be there you'll plug into the wall I realize as I'm saying this that the younger people probably know it far better than they they don't actually that's not true they, and they're very confident and so they're very confident <laughs> and they make all kinds of mistakes they they really don't know um, 
Because yes. it's all, they, they never learn it. They just do trial and error. So there's all kinds of things that they don't really get. That's a, that's a miss. It's like middle-aged people are the best. Nice. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> Amy brought up some good points. I, you know, in the, in the contract you put in, it, like it says like firmware updates, system training, et cetera. Is there any way you can send an RFI back to them to see how long that stuff happens and like what sort of system training they mean specifically? Where do you see that? Where did you see that? You're muted, Paul. On page 26. Thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. If you look at the contract that you put in the packet. I must not have it here. So read it to me again. What does it say? It just says, it tells you like the price it says uh, for the commissioning, uh, program loading, system tuning, configuration, network coordination, firmware updates, and system training. I, I mean, I think Amy brought up some good points saying, hey, you know, maybe sending an RFI back saying, you know, what kind of system training specifically, and then how long does that, that uh, the updates for stuff, you know, with the, the new high tech system goes on for? Um, I think you got something you weren't supposed to that I didn't actually put in the packet and it got scanned to you. Um, so I'm she wondering, the, the I'm wondering if it's, is it, it, does it say on it that's, that it's the pro AV contract? So you can see it's the pro AV contract. It says pro AV services. Okay. Um, so I don't know exactly what you're looking at, but when we were together in the room, um, I felt like I was getting all the support. We were gonna be able to get all the support that we needed. And I also was able to contact other people who have used this company, um, several, and they unanimously have had good luck with them. So I'll look at that, um, cause I don't have it in front of me and I'll, and I'll see if I can answer you better. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I actually, Catherine, I was gonna, Paul makes a good point. I kind of had the same situation and um, that we're talking about is training and I would, I'd nail them down a little bit on the amount of training they'll give you. Uh -huh. And I would actually, so if they commit to say four hours of training, so you can train people on staff, that way you could call them back for a refresher if there's issues. Um, because you're not going to use four hours or whatever the number is. Right. Um, it's, it's probably a good way to get it, <clears throat> you know, instead of saying, oh, we'll, we'll come out any time. Um, you know, you might want to nail them down on the training. Okay. It's. I, I think that's a big one. And then the, the updates piece. I just know, cause like yeah. with all the stuff that we do at work, like I do with federal contracts, but in there. It's more like, hey, for this amount of time, they're going to update our stuff, and and so just knowing that, I think that get, that gives you some ammunition too to go say, hey, look, we want to spend an extra ten thousand dollars, but here's here's the reasons why. Has this already been purchased? Yes. I heard that at the town council meeting last night. Oh, Mary. I guess it's. I but guess yeah, it's exactly. We bought a projector, and I said, oh, wait, a, wait a minute. <laughs> we haven't. I didn't know if we had to vote on it. No, you don't have to vote on it. Okay. But I can still get, I can still negotiate the contract. The things that are in that contract, we are still talking about things like that. Okay, so no vote required here. So um, no. I think the last, item on the agenda is an update on the action plan. Yes, and there's really no update. We finished it. It's the, this, okay. was, this was the longest action plan in history, it seems like. Um, but despite the p p pandemic, everything that was in here that we had wanted to do, for the most part, we did it. Um, and it, as of July 1st, we'll be starting with a new plan. 
doing new things. Has to be accomplished. Okay. It is. Um, so speaking of accomplishments at the end here, um, Amy, uh, when you volunteered to put together a, a letter um, yep. to the to the general public, um, talking about the pandemic accomplishments, uh, where are we at with that? We're on a rough draft, so I was going to um, mention that to you guys and to the people that weren't at the personnel meeting. Um, we did talk about. Um, just acknowledging the staff and everything that they've done in the pandemic, um, because there's sort of mixed um, perceptions in the public as far as you know the library being closed. It was, the building was closed. The library wasn't closed. You know, in the same sense that my kid's school was closed as a building, but they still went to school. So um, we all know that the staff has been really hardworking, and things like I know um, Catherine's reference checking out a book went from one step to eight steps. They've been working really harder almost um, because of all the extra steps they had to do. So as we are reopening, we had said maybe um, I'm going to write a letter to go to the item um, and CC a copy to send to town council on behalf of the trustees as a whole, um, which I can email it out to you guys just to, you know, if there's a glaring um, grammatical error, spelling error, whatever you want to correct, great. I, I'm hoping not to have nine rewrites on it, um, but if we can just sort of, you know, everyone okay it before it goes public, um, just to sort of a, you know, thanks so much as we reopen for what the staff has done um, and, and really to kind of point out how much work they've been doing in case there's anyone out there who still thinks that maybe we were closed. That's a great idea. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, that's great then. So you think you're going to have it? Um, so we won't have to wait for the next meeting? Oh, no, no, no. Like within 48 hours. Perfect. Okay, yeah. well, I'm not putting the timer. I just wanted to get a sense <laughs> where, where we're at and let other people know that you're working on it. Yeah, I would like to actually sort of time it with um, really with like what, Tuesday's item maybe because this is the when the library is reopening. So sort of as a... Yeah, well, that's, fact, that's a good idea. And let's acknowledge everything that they've done in the past, you know, 14 months. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. And just kind of related to that, it was, Catherine, I would say, it was really nice having the, the staff from the youth room at tonight's meeting. And just, um, especially since we haven't been able to see, um, especially those who don't use the youth room, but to see folks, it was really nice to have them and their energy in the, in the meeting. So. Please thank them. I will do that. I don't okay. know, Catherine, you do, um, is it Library Appreciation Week that normally you've done like a luncheon and all that. This year, I assume you didn't get to, or did you guys get to do anything? Um, no, the fr years ago, the friends used to do that. Okay. Um, but but we, we don't really, there's an advocacy thing that has to do with library appreciation and you encourage um, the public to show their appreciation and they use that to show the um, representatives, the, the government officials um, as an advocacy thing because sometimes people don't understand how libraries work. Um, so that, oh, which reminds me, that's probably something that I should mention that wasn't in my report. I was, uh, is anybody familiar with the vision 2030? Um, that, yeah. So I was asked to, um, I don't know really what I was asked to do <laughs> me and, um, oh, so Adam knows about this because Anthony Quadia was asked as well. We were both asked at the same time. Um, and they knew it was a hard ask. Um, so we'll, we're doing something to, to help them with their presentation and we're going to, each of us will do one of the breakout rooms, but it will have to do with the library and what the vision could be, um, you know, where the library would fit in a future vision for the town. And it's a really good opportunity to 
get people to think about the library in terms of what it's capable of as a, uh, what the possibilities are, as opposed to what you think of it as from when you were a kid. Um, so I have to actually be able to pull it off, but um, I did sign up for that. Me too. Okay, great. So, well, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn I just have, uh, from hopefully, you got something else? Thing, Tim, one quick thing. Um, yeah. Catherine, I don't know if, if it's inappropriate, but I hope it is. Um, I'd like the trustees to acknowledge um, Jackie's dad and oh. maybe send her flowers or send something. I know you did something as the library, but I think we should do something. I think it's still time to get the services. I haven't seen any dates or anything. Maybe you know. Yeah, the um, it, it's in the western part of the state, and the um, the services are Friday night and Saturday morning. The mass is Saturday morning. Um, the funeral home is um, the wake is uh, um, Friday night. It what I, what I would suggest is um, is is sending something to Jackie's home next week. Um, from what I understand, he grew up, he grew up in town, um, was a firefighter and an EMT and really well loved. And they're expecting an absolute mob scene okay. of people. Cause it's a fairly small, you know, it's, it's big, it's like yeah. Whitfield, I guess it's a little smaller. Um, but both of them are, he and his wife were well known in town. So I'm thinking when she comes home, that might be nice. And okay. she's a uh, I, I don't know that if we have a budget or, or what we need to do, but I think I will follow your lead. And I suggest you send something to Jackie's home when she returns sometime next week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to do like a private, if we can do a off the record, you know, Venmo collection or whatever, does it have to be? Like an official trustee fund thing, or can it just be? I don't care how we pay for it, you know. Oh, okay, I didn't know if you were from uh, the board of trustees to yeah. uh, Jackie. We should do something. Yeah, my only question with I don't I, I'm a, I agree with the sentiment. I just um, are there? Have we done that for other staff? I know. Yeah. Yes, I worry from a um, the president equity standpoint. Um, what the precedent is there. And if maybe just personal, um, Catherine shared her mailing address, I don't know. I just don't wanna, you know, cause then the next, I know we haven't done it for other people who have lost family members. And I just, I wanna be really careful at a time where people might note that. Okay. So I don't, I, I hope that's not, is coming off correctly. No, it's that's a good, it's a valid point. And um, as far as I, you know, we really haven't done anything uh, for family members, for other family members um, um, in the past. Uh, so I, it's up to, I would say, if you want to take the lead on it, Catherine, to let us know what you want to do. Yeah. Or if you want you us to do something privately. Yeah, I'll send out an email and maybe you can talk about it privately what you want to do. Okay. It's, um, I think from Laura's perspective, the one thing that I would say is that as a staff, we do these things for one another all the time. And your relationship with Jackie is a little bit more like staff members than it would be with maybe anybody else. I mean, you work with Jackie and I closely. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a little bit of a difference there. Um, but something did go from, from the staff and trustees that will be at the funeral home. Okay, I, I, I sent that to them. So, um, and, but something at home would be, um, or anybody's welcome to send a card or whatever. I'll send an email. Send a card already, so, but just yeah. from Eric and I. So. Yeah, I'll send an email. Yeah, let us know. Thank you. Sorry, Tim. I would love to. No, no, that's uh, that's it. <laughs> I actually forgot about it. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, can so I, can I you, 
10 seconds because I'm not going to be here next month because I'll be in Nashville. Um, All right. <laughs> just want to welcome Scott and Paul um, and thank you both for running. And this was our first um, heated library trustee race in as long as I've been in Wakefield, probably a little longer. Um, so I'm glad that you're both here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. That's it. Okay. So now I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn our hopefully our last Zoom meeting. Mm. Um, Second. And, and I want that recorded. <laughs> says the last Zoom meeting. Um, there's a second from um, Chris. So motion to adjourn. Uh, Amy? Yes. Susan? Yes. Chris? Yes. Adam? Yes. Laura? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Scott? Yes, sir. And my, I'm, a, I, I'm an eye for that. So uh, to everybody, have a nice Memorial Day weekend. Um, hopefully you can enjoy it with your family and close friends and you can even hug and and shake their hands and do all those things. So enjoy it. Um, and we'll see you next, uh, we'll see you in uh, June in person. Good, good night. Have a good, have a good holiday weekend, everybody. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.